Good afternoon, everyone. And Good afternoon. thank you for showing up. Um, please put yourself on mute if you're not already on mute, because we're going to start with um, taking some breaths. I really like doing that before we do anything, just taking some, you know, some mindful breaths, breathing in and breathing out slowly, noticing the breath. Nothing to do, nowhere to go. Just breathing in and breathing out. And perhaps noting where you feel the breath most prominently in your body. Perhaps at the nostrils or the upper body or the belly. Just noticing how you're breathing moment to moment. And taking in the sound of the bells. So welcome to our mini lesson today. Um, I thought I would spend uh, the first part of our time together with just uh, giving you an idea of how we build a song, the bedside harp way. So let me get my harp. And if you're on mute, you can follow along with or without your harp. So the first thing we do is um, we who play in healthcare can't be walking around with a music stand. So um, we're usually pulling tunes in by ear. There are too many tunes that um, we're asked to play to be able to remember them all, memorize them all. So if we understand how music works, usually we can kind of, um, you know, pull it in by the way it sounds. So we start, I start teaching by talking about the scale because all music is based on the scale. And we primarily play in the key of C major because if you don't understand one key and that how, how that works, then you're not going to understand any key. So we stay in, um, in the key of C major and instead of naming the notes C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, we name them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. And when you think of the scale in terms of numbers, oh my goodness, all these aha moments occur. Um, the first aha moment occurs um, that occurs is that of realizing that melodies typically begin on the one, the three, or the five. And they also typically run about an octave, because that's the mo most humans have that range of singing. And the octave could be one to one or five to five. Okay, with that in mind, we're going to take a really simple tune. We always start with children's tunes uh, because they, they're just really embedded in our bodies and our hearts and our minds. So we take something like Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star and just um, pull in the melody by ear. And we notice 
when we sing it, we hum it without the words, we notice the direction that it goes, we notice any um, repetitions, we notice um, anything there is to notice. And we know that if we start on the, if we get that first note of the song, and we may not always get that first note, so sometimes we have to end the song before we start it because we know that most of the time that every tune is going to wind up on the one it's going to come home at the end of the song so if we hum twinkle twinkle little star da 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 Then I notice all the repetition of the of the notes, and I notice that the first the first interval, the first jump is da da di. So it's a jump. It's not going to be da da di da di. And sure enough, it's going to start on one, jump to five, up to six, five, then four, three, two, one. Then it's going to go five, five, four, four, three, three, two. And again, same thing, five, four, four, three, three, two. Then the first theme is going to return. One, one, five, five, six, six, five, four, four, three, three, two, two, one. Okay, so we've got that down. Now, what do we do? What do we do with the left hand? Well, we don't do, we don't do much with it initially. We can just use the root of the chord. And we know that most tunes, most tunes can be chorded with the chord built on the first degree of the scale, which in the key of C is the C, the fourth degree, and the fifth degree. So let's see how that goes. Just playing the root of the chord. So in healthcare, less is more. People are on medications, they're coming out of surgery and surgical procedures, and too many notes is too many notes. So those of us who have been playing the harp for years, it takes a while to really understand that less is more because if you can do more you usually wind up doing more so we just have to keep reminding ourselves that it's just fine to play very simply you can take the 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 um, melody up an octave and play it in the higher range <laughs> simply done. However, when you see that somebody is not in a critical state, and they could handle more uh, notes 
because it's really a matter of being them being able to handle more more notes rather than oh look at me I can play all these different ways. So you just really have to test it and see, you know, how is this working out? And I will tell you that the very young and the very old can't hear the melody if you put too much in into the, the harmony. If you put too many notes in, they can't grasp the melody. So at the very least, you want to state the melody clearly at first. Okay, so let's say we have someone who's going to be discharged and they really like to have you play for them. And you can start out by playing very simply, but the first time you play it, you may wanna play it simply, and then you may want to add some stuff to it. So what are the kinds of things we can add? Well, we, I always say, if you're going to add anything in the base, in the bottom, you want to use an open fifth. In other words, if you're playing a C, uh, uh, something under a C chord, then you don't want C, E, G. You don't want this thick sound on the bottom. Rather, open it up to C, G. You can have the third of the chord in this octave, but down here, it just sounds too muddy. So here's how it would be if I just did open fifths. every note. In fact, again, that just may be too many notes. So I can also, of course, take it up an octave. And I can maybe do a 1-5-1 in my left hand. in my right hand with my melody note in my thumb so that that will be heard as the ending. I could do an introduction too. I could play a G arpeggio, which is a five chord, and then go into a piece of music. Um, if it's in the key of C major, the five chord leads you to the one chord and the one chord will typically be the first chord that will be used in the in the piece of music. So let's say again that I'm playing for someone who is feeling well and ready to be discharged. So then I may show off a little bit. I may wind up starting simply as we did, but maybe I'll add some chords in the right hand. even fancier why i don't know but you, we you know we we like to be able to play it a, a lot of different ways because there will be a lot of different situations and you'll be playing the same tune perhaps over and over again so one of the other ways i may play it and it's still simple is to echo the left hand chord root of the chord instead of playing it together to do
well, that's different. And of course, you can do any combination of all of these things. But um, let me now take all the stops out and say that I'm going to be playing this song for someone maybe who's really sick, maybe even in a coma. So I'm going to play it, play the melody, but I'm going to use different chords, and that's going to have the whole thing feel different. also add notes in the right hand if I wanted to to the melody so that I'm not playing the melody straight on but I call it playing it slant Emily Dickinson wrote a poem and the line is tell all the truth but tell it slant so I tell my students play the tune so it's recognizable but think about playing it slant You see, I'm playing my harp. I'm not working at my harp. I'm not planning to play it one way or, you know, all the time. I'm going to play it different ways every time. And just as the, the maybe last one that I'll show you today, and there are hundreds of ways that you can play your tunes, um, I'll play it with some seventh chords. Thank you. As, as long as it sounds wonderful and everything on the harp really sounds wonderful. So one more point, when we're playing in healthcare, we're not focusing on looking at the strings. We're focused on looking at the recipient. So there's going to be times that you're going to lose, so-called lose the melody. Oh, well, then we just go to noodling and we learn how to noodle because noodles work exactly how music works. And the whole point of studying music, in my view, is to understand the logic and to understand how music works. And then it's yours. 
So um, I just want to, um, I want to, uh, at this point, just give you a sense of, um, you know, maybe a celebratory twinkle. different states of being, different moods. And that's so much fun to be able to play, you know, a simple tune so many different ways in different situations. The other thing that happens, and I'll end in a moment um, and open it up for any questions you have. Um, the other thing is, is that when you play by ear, you begin you take away the music, that intermediary, that notation, the score, and you're just having the relationship between you and your harp. And you may start thinking, you know, that sounds like a song I know. And sure enough, here's the song. It's a Wonderful World is reworked Twinkle Twinkle. Pretty cool, huh? There's only seven tones in the diatonic scale. So of course, there's going to be redundancy. And that's the, that's what's really exciting when you start working by playing by ear. Then you begin to connect the dots and say, oh yeah, this sounds like, and then you not only are learning one tune, you're learning multiple tunes. So let me take a few moments to answer any questions or hear from you, your comments. Anybody? Hi, Edie, it's Barbara. Hi, Barb. I just signed in to say happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you. 21 years. Oh, wow. Oh, cool. Thank you. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. Barb, you've been a certified harp therapist, master harp therapist for how long? Since 2012. 2012. Yeah. Okay. I remember it well. Yes, <laughs> like it was yesterday. <laughs> Somebody asked, Adele um, Marie asked, is it ever appropriate to sing with the harp in a therapeutic setting? Yes, yes, it certainly is. And sometimes it's, you know, the voice is like our first ever instrument. Maybe the harp is the second, but the voice is the first. And definitely, it is very appropriate to um, sing at the bedside. Um, but again, you have to be careful with words. It's probably best not to use words or just rather hum. Um, when my own mother was, um, was dying, she was in the emergency room, and I was called there very early in the morning. And I didn't, I didn't bring my harp. And that's what I did is I, I, I sang to her. So yes, I think it's very appropriate. Do I take PayPal for payment for tuition? Well, we ask that if you are going to be um, taking our program that you use our website because our website is a secure website and it says pay invoice and you could pay through there. 
Uh, thank you for the advice of thinking numbers instead of notes. Yes, numbers. Oh my goodness. The whole world opened up to me when I started looking at the scale and numbers. So thank you. You have to disinfect your heart between each patient. Good question. All of these questions are good. No, we don't because the patients don't play the harps. We play the harps. And nobody touches the harp when we're in the hospitals except us. So no, um, we don't. And I keep my harp in the case when I'm not playing in the hospital. The harp that I'm playing today is not my hospital harp. That's in another place in the house. Thank you so much for um, everything that you're bringing today. I'm a person who's always more or less played by ear and the notion of music theory has always been a little intimidating to me. <laughs> and so <laughs> I feel like I'm a kindergartner in a way and I, I'm, I'm really open to just moving at the pace, whatever pace you go, you explain things so simply that even with this first session, a part of me has said, oh, okay. So I wanted to thank you for that. <laughs> You're very welcome. Yeah, so, you know, I've had years and years. Uh, I took music in high school and in college, and we would have theory, you know, in one class, and then we would play our instrument and have lessons, private lessons in a whole different class, and then the two never came together. It was really only... Um, I mean, I knew the theory, but it was theory. It wasn't married to what I what I was doing, what I was playing until, because um, some people can play by ear very naturally. For me, it wasn't so natural. I had to really understand what I was doing. And so I taught myself this way and I realized, oh, when you go to numbers, it's like the whole logic just falls out in front of you. It's really cool. And there's some questions. I love that you said the fifth leads back to the first. I've been interested in knowing the relationships between chords and more of the feeling of the chords. I started the harp when I was little and never really cared to sight read. I feel I feel like a natural harmony, I guess. Um, but I want to understand the relationships. Yeah, it's really important to understand, you know, um you well i i think i demonstrated that you can change the whole mood of a song based just on the harmony that you choose and there are major chords and minor chords in every major scale and if you just stick with one four five those are just the major chords and they're fine they're bright though and so you really want to be able i call the chords the, the chords that are in every scale, the chord palette, because we color our music by using or selecting one chord over another chord. And so the last times I was playing it and saying that there was someone in a coma, you know, I was using minor chords rather than the major chords because that the minor chords evoke, you know, have some pathos and, and that kind of thing. Um, let me see if I can. And yes, I teach that. Uh, do you mainly improvise and play by ear for patients? Mainly, only. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, I, I've played uh, over 3,500 hours at the bedside because we do keep track of that. I think it's really important for us to, you know, have a sense of of how many um, hours we've played at the bedside. There's no way that I could memorize tunes uh, to be to be able to play spontaneously, to be able to pull things in for them at the moment if I memorize things. I'd have to memorize not only the notation, but I'd have to memorize the tunes that I knew. So um, when, a, when a song comes to me and I have ways of calling up, you know, uh, my list of, of tunes, um, you know, just by genre, sometimes by maybe the, you know, the theme of the song, 
I want to be able to play it right in the moment. And so, yeah, we play only. I mean, I play, not everybody, but I, I do play only by ear and improvise. And does my program teach playing by ear? Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's what we do musically. I mean, it's a, it's a program that fully prepares you. This is the certification program to play in healthcare settings. So there are other segments that, you know, we have to cover, but the music portion is, um, and we have that not only built into every one of the classroom module, the four classroom modules, but we also have a three hour uh, music only workshop attached to each module. So you have an additional 12 hours of study with just the harp, just the music. Life has put me in a place where I'm struggling, I'm not progressing, would like words of hope and inspiration to get out of this slump. Oh, wow. Well, I understand struggle. Man, do I understand <laughs> struggle. I went for 28 years without touching a harp, even though I had played it in high school and majored in it in college. But as life turned out for me, I didn't play a harp for 28 years. So I was put in a place uh, where I longed to play, but never had. And I only knew about one kind of harp, by the way. I knew about the concert harp, which costs more than some cars actually so um i never i never got to play for 28 years but then what made me go back was somebody my age died and i recognized my own mortality suddenly very abruptly and realized that if you don't do what's in your heart to do you may never get to do it. You may die, wind up, wind up dying without doing it. And that, that spurred me on. So I don't know um, what may spur you on, but if, if this is something that's in your heart and you want to do it, you can only, you can only grow along with that. If you, if you just take one step at a time. Where can I get a harp repaired near Princeton? Well, there is um, the Virginia Harp Center, which is in Haddonfield, New Jersey. So um, it's a little bit of a ride, but it's worth going to. Do you need full levers or levels on levers on six? Okay, you don't need full levers. However, you do want to have, and it's not required, but I would think you would want to have a good sounding harp. Um, we don't use levers a whole lot at the bedside because whenever you engage a lever, you're impeding the quality of the sound of the string. So, and also if you put it up, you have to remember to put it down because then it's horrible if you, if you don't. So levers are not as important. We put, we like to make sure levers are on the E's and B's. You ask why, because we like to be able to flip them up in certain situations and play in the pentatonic mode, which is only five tones, but you don't need to have, you can retune if you wanted to. Is a harpsicle, sharpsicle and okay for your program, levers on C's and F's? It's okay, we have some people who are playing the full sickle, um, the sharpsicle, is it, we consider that a student harp, but if that's what you have, we can get you started on that, certainly. Um, it's certainly more affordable, but it just doesn't deliver the quality of sound. And if you're going to be training to be a sound therapist or a harp therapist, you want as much as possible to be able to deliver a good sound. And um, I'm going to just, let's see, are there therapeutic conditions under which might be important to play in different modes? Yes, we do play in different modes, but um, 
primarily I play in major, minor, Dorian, and um, and and maybe uh, Mixolydian. So, um, Edie, although it's important to build a repertoire, are there situations where one might intuit? I'm thinking walking into a room and just to intuit a certain presence or mood and out of that, maybe not play a recognizable tune or even an improvisational version of that, but just out of a sense of, I guess it's an intuitive sense, just start creating something. Sure. And that's it's noodling. Really that's what we call noodling because our improvisations are not always based. I mean, they work. If you if you thought about it, it works like music because it won't sound organized otherwise. So we learn you learn how to improvise in a way that you're just it's just like a Polaroid, you know, a shot of the moment. You won't be able to probably recreate it. You're just responding to the situation or the person in front of you. And so, yes, definitely. We do a lot of that in the hospital. So thank you everyone for showing up. I really thank appreciate you. you coming. And um, if you want more information on anything, feel free to uh, send me a note. I'm Edie at bedsideharp.com. And um, take care. Thank, thank you so much. Goodbye, everyone. Blessings. Bye.